This is a note for section 10 to multiplication, area, and volume. If you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video and read section 10 to before continuing on. Uh, to begin with, I, I've, I've left four problems here on your notes, and I, I want you to try those. I'm not actually going to go over these in the video. We're going to talk about these in class. But these skills of using your distributive property and using the FOIL method and the FOIL method and distributive property combined. All skills from kind of your Algebra 1 course are going to come up in this lesson. So we'll go over each of these problems in class to make sure that everyone's kind of on board in terms of how to do those. But before you get to class, I'd like you to try and do each one of those at this time and then go ahead and continue on with the video at that point. All right, one of the concepts that we talked about earlier in this course is the idea of using the area model to perform a multiplication. And the area model, if it just kind of a quick review, is where we take and, and we can break a rectangle into smaller rectangles that we can find the area of. So for instance, if I know that the, the length of this rectangle is, if this is A and this is B, then um, the length of that rectangle would be a plus b, which is what I have right here. And if and if the width is if this width is c and this is d, then the width of the entire rectangle would be c plus d. Now let's not let's be careful because a lot of times when I write it like this, people want to say that this is the distance here is a times b. It's not. It's the sum of those two distances. So it's a plus b, and the same thing up here. So if I want to multiply these two things out, I can do it by looking at the area of each one of these rectangles. And if, if I look at this, the area of this rectangle here would be A times C. This one over here would be A times D. Down here, B times C. And then finally, this last rectangle over here would be B times D. So this, what, what that's telling me is that if I multiply these two sums together, it's the same as the sum of the area of these four rectangles, which I have listed below. Okay. Now, if we do our FOIL method, which, which we've, we've learned in Algebra 1, we come up with the exact same thing. And remember, the FOIL method, method is F for first O for outer, I for inner, and finally L for last. So here's first, outer, inner, last. So these, each one of these represents one of the products of the FOIL method. <laughs> So let's apply this area method that we talked about over here uh, to this first example here. It says, what, a, what binomial multiplication is pictured in this diagram? So as I look at this diagram below, remember that it's length times width. And when I'm doing it, when I have it written like this, it would be the sum of these two measurements. So this is the same as saying 3x plus 4. And we're multiplying it by the sum of these two, which would be 4x plus 1. So that would be part A. Part B says to multiply those binomials. So let's go through and do that. Well, in essence, we can go ahead and do the FOIL method, but we don't need to. We already have the areas for these four rectangles listed below. Therefore, if I'm going to multiply those, all I need to do is take the sum of those areas. So it's going to be equal to 12x squared plus 3x plus 16x plus 4. And then we would want to combine our like terms. 3x and 16x are like terms. Therefore, we can write that as 12x squared plus 19x plus 4. So this would represent the area of that rectangle. Part C says to check your results by uh, putting x equals 2 into the equation here. 
If I do that, then um, what, what I'd want to show is that the area of this rectangle is the, exactly the same as the area of what I have over here. So if x equals 2, this is like 6 and 4, and this would be 8 and 1. So the area of this rectangle right here would be 48. So if I take 12 times 2 squared, that's also 48. If I have 3, this right here is 6 times 1, or 6. And this is, uh, right here is 4 times 8, or 32. If I add those together, I get 38. So 19 times 2 is also 38. And then finally, I have 4 here. So if I add 4 on, you'll notice that I get exactly the same thing. So this this length over here is 10, this here is 9, so the area of the big rectangle would have to be 90. And if I add these up right here, 48 plus 38 plus 4, I also get 90. So since the area of both of them are 90, it checks when x is equal to 2. So we want to extend the same idea of the area model for rectangles, basically to volume. Um, we have an activity here where we have a, a box with dimensions of A plus B, C plus D, and E plus F. So to find that volume, uh, basically what we're doing is we're finding the volume of all eight of these boxes. And you can see how there's there's a total of seven that are showing here, and then there's one more that's underneath this box right here um, that would be sitting below that that would that we would also have to find the air, the volume of. So if I find the volume of all eight of those boxes and add them up, they'll be equal to the volume of the entire box. Okay, um, this activity is one that we're gonna we're gonna do have you do in class. Um, so. Uh, at this time, we're not going to do any more with that on the video here. All right, next I'm going to do a couple examples, and they relate to two examples in your book. So you might want to just maybe have your book open to this if you've, if you've done a good job of reading these already. But if not, maybe just glance back at example 2 on page 605, and then example 3, which is on 605 and 606. Take a look at those examples. Both these kind of relate to those two examples, and then I'll go ahead and go through both of those. So let's take a look at this second example here. It says a box has dimensions of length, width, and height. If the length is multiplied by 5, the width is multiplied by 6, and the height is multiplied by 2, how has the volume of the box changed? Well, we know that the original volume of that box would be length times width times height. Now, if the new length is 5 times the original length, and the new width is 6 times the original width, and the new height is 2 times the original height, my new volume would be 5L times 6W times 2H. Well, if I we know that multiplication is commutative, so I can take all of my numbers and multiply those together first. 5 times 6 times 2. Well, 5 times 6 is 30. 30 times 2 is 60. So that's the same as saying 60 times the length times the width times the height. Therefore, how is it related? Well, notice how it's 60 times what we originally had. So the answer would be it's 60 times the original value. All right, so let's take a look at example 3. It says the length of a box is increased by 5, the width is increased by 6, and the height is increased by 2. How has the volume changed? Well, we know that the original volume is equal to the original length times the original width times the original height. Okay. Well, now my new length is going to be 5 more, so I've got to add 5 to it. 
my new width is going to be 6 more, so I add 6 to it. And my new height is going to be 2 more, so I'm going to add 2 to it. So my new volume is going to be equal to length plus 5 times width plus 6 times the height plus 2. Okay. Now, we can we can multiply that out by thinking about those as being those eight separate boxes like we did in that activity. And we want to find the volume of each of those boxes. So let's do that. So this would be the sum then of those eight, the volumes of those eight uh, separate boxes. Notice how the first one is length times width times height. And, and to find each one of these I took one value from each one of the sums. So the first one is length times width times height. Therefore, the other seven of them would represent how the volume has changed because we started out with a volume of length times width times height. So this other stuff right here would represent the vo how the volume has changed when I, when I multiply, or add 5 to the length and add 6 to the width and add 2 to the height. Notice how each one of these um, has one value from each of the different sums. So for instance, if I look at this one here, 5HW, I have a 5, I have a W from this one, and I have an H from this one. Now some of them where they only have two, like 12L, notice how that's going to be L from this one, 6 from this one, and 2 from this one. So when I simplified it, it became just 12L. So this is how that volume would change.